Hey everyone, it's Lily. Happy to have you in Power Ring channel. And today I'm going to talk about many types of fabric to help fashion brands develop wonderful designs. Let's go! When you get really into fabric sourcing, there's a word to describe every single type of weave and the color and the pattern. But I'm going to cover the ones that I see the most in fashion and hopefully that's helpful for those people who might just start their clothing line. With what you need, first how fabric is classified. Most fabric can be categorized in two ways. It's either woven or knit. When it's woven, the threads have been interlocked like this. Think of like a basket weave, but shrunk down into a fabric size. In woven fabrics, the property is that you are using it for is that it retains its shape. It doesn't have a lot of stretch, and because it doesn't have a lot of stretch, it is easier to sew with. That makes woven fabric to great starting point for beginners, because it is less likely to move under the machine while you're sewing. Then the other way fabric can be made is knit. So think of some huge cable knit sweater. All the yarns are weaving in and out to create it. And then that weaving motion is what makes knit fabric stretchy and flexible. When you are using knit, you are using it for because you like the way it stretches and moves. But also because it stretches and moves, it can sometimes be harder to sew with. Depending on what it is that you want to sew, you are going to want to use a woven fabric or a knit fabric. And most of the time, it depends on whether you want it to be non-stretchy or stretchy. Okay, the next way fabric can be classified is the materials that makes up its fibers. There's three types of materials that fabric can be made from. It can be nature, synthetic, or semi-synthetic. And I got a lot of comments that a lot of you have interest in sustainable materials. Well, then you might prefer the natural fibers. Natural fibers are harvested and then woven or knitted into fabrics. You probably heard of these fibers before. The more common in fashion are cotton, linen, silk, wool, cashmere, and hemp. When it comes to synthetic fibers, there are ones that are completely chemically manufactured. There are way more different types of this because basically, if you invented a new way to chemically manufacture fabric, you can pattern it and call it whatever you like. But the common ones that you'll find are nylon, acrylic, polyester, and spandex. And lastly, there are these semi-synthetic ones. This include rayon, lysol. These materials are basically wood pulp, sometimes bamboo. It's been modified into a cellulose-based fiber, which has been woven or knitted into a fabric. For the exact same physical properties, natural fiber is usually the one that's the most expensive. But the synthetic fiber have really been made to imitate all of them. So when it comes to choosing between them, I found a lot of it depends on where you stand, ethically or what your preference is for how it feels and what it's made of. Since synthetic fibers are less biodegradable, at the same time, some natural fibers have to harvest it from animals. And those people who are sensitive to the use of animals to make our clothing, they will prefer to use synthetic fibers. When you're shopping for clothes, you don't always get to make these choices because the clothing have already been made for you. But if you're the one buying the material, it is good to think about what is that you're buying and whether you stand for. Okay, we will cover a lot of fabric terminology now. I'm going to go through the different types of fabric that you usually use for warmer weather, cooler weather, and for more occasions. There's a couple of fabrics that you are commonly be looking for when you are looking to make clothes for warmer weather. Typically, it is cotton, rayon, chambray, some knit silk, and linen. Cotton is really lightweight. It can range from being sheer to totally opaque. If it is really thin, it can be very soft. If it is heavier cotton, it can be more stiff. If you wanted to make a bottom-up shirt, a stiffer, pleated kind of summer dress, those are instances where cotton might be useful. The next one is rayon. Rayon is really smooth. It is lightweight and it can come in some really bright colors and prints. It's been made to be pretty breathable and it is also a bit more delicate of a fabric. On dresses, you use it for something that has a lot of movement and for shirts, it is very soft, so it falls on you in a gentle way. For chambray, 
This is like if you were trying to strike a point between light cotton and denim. It's a pretty smooth. It's lightweight, but it's a little bit stiffer. Dress shirts can be made of chambray, and since it is stiffer and a little bit durable, you could also use it for a pair of shorts. Knit fabric out of all of those probably has the broadest range of light to a heavy weight. Its main feature is that it has stretch, and in most cases with knit, it covers a wide range of natural and synthetic fibers. When you are making tank tops or any dresses that are more fitted, knit is the route you want to go because it is just going to follow the curves of your body. Silk is very lightweight and it's pretty delicate, sometimes depending on how it's made. It can have a shimmery and a dull side, and it tends to be a little bit more slippery too. So it is a slightly more challenging fabric for beginners, but the silk just naturally has a very luxury look to it. So it's really nice in dresses and shirts, and it's super breathable, which makes it a great fabric for summer. Finally, the last summer fabric that I use often is linen. Linen is a bit more medium weight. It is very, very breathable, but it wrinkles super easily. Uh, you can make dresses, shirts, shorts, but linen is not going to give you that crispy look that chambray or cotton could. Those are the ones that I use the most. Some of the fabrics can transition into the winter time. But the winter does bring around a couple more heavier fabrics that I can talk about. Denim, flannel, fleece, wool, fox fur, wool fur, and leather. Denim you are probably already familiar with if you own a pair of jeans, but it is a bit more heavyweight. There's not a lot of drip or stretch to it. The only reason skinny jeans are able to fit well is because it's been mixed with some spandex. Flannel is a little bit more lightweight, but it's soft and insulating, so it's perfect for pajamas or any kind of comfy clothes. Fleece is another one that specifically is used for its insulating properties. It's in the medium heavyweight range. It's almost always made of polyester, and it's really great for hoodies and sweaters. Any kind of those campus crew neck type of things, uh, they are used in the fleece. Next is wool, which has a pretty broad range for light to heavy weight. But in all cases, it's pretty insulating, but still not a fabric that's used much for warmer weather. It's very durable, and you can see it's in a thinner form in things like suits, all the way to something really thick, like what they use for pea coats or jackets. Between fox fur and real fur, fox fur is a little bit less insulating. It doesn't last quite as long as real fur. They're both very heavy. Heavyweight and usually used as an accent type of pieces on winter wear. It could be the entire coat, or it could be a pair of trims. And in most cases, fox fur is also much less expensive to buy than real fur. Finally, the last winter fabric that comes up a lot in fashion is leather. Leather is typically pretty heavyweight. It's a bit more challenging to work with because once you sew through leather, those holes are there forever, so you can't make any mistake. I've used it before to make jackets, but you can also use it to make bags and other durable things. The last kind of category where a lot of fabric sits is in the more formal type of clothing. Here you'll find your twill, crinoline, chiffon, satin, lace, and velvet. Twill and crinoline are both a form of netting. Twill is a little more soft and densely netted. Crinoline is a bit more generous and very stiff. Twill is used to be decorative in the accents. Crinoline is usually hiding underneath to provide more structure. Uh, chiffon is a very lightweight, very sheer fabric. It flows really easily. If you get silk chiffon, it can be pretty expensive. And on the other end, there is polyester chiffon, which is a lot more affordable. Satin is the glossy fabric that you often see on the wedding dresses or prom dresses. It can range from light to heavyweight, but its main feature is its glossiness. And lace is typically silk or cotton threads that have been 
purposefully patterned into all sorts of flowering, embellishing shapes. That's one of the main reasons why lace is expensive, because it's much more difficult to manufacture. And finally, the velvet. Velvet is pretty medium heavyweight. I would not recommend wearing it for summer. It is insulating and it's usually purchased because it's shimmery. Those are the typical fabrics I'm looking for when we are going with the fashion projects. I hope it is helpful for you and your fabric sourcing a little bit less overwhelming. If you like this video, please let me know. And you can also follow our Instagram and YouTube. We will post a lot of video about profession, the fabric sourcing and clothing production. I will see you guys next time. Bye!